We are living in the age of superhero epics. From the Avengers to the Justice League and even the Seven, it seems like every streaming service has their own big superhero team out front and center. Well, now Netflix is bringing a new superhero epic to life, one that might be the biggest ever told. So let's dive into the most powerful heroes from their new series, Jupiter's Legacy. It's kind of strange that Hutch is one of the most successful heroes in the Jupiter series. As the son of Sky Fox, it was expected that Hutch would have superpowers of his own. Surprisingly, he was born as just a regular, no-powers human. When Hutch was a child, though, Sky Fox made him his own power rod modeled after the Blue Bolts. This rod gave him the power to teleport anywhere he told it to go. Like a teleporting Alexa. Seeing as this is one of the lower level powers in the grand scheme of things, you wouldn't consider him to be a heavy hitter in the series. Hutch's skill with the power rod was so great that he became a real problem for pretty much anyone chasing or attacking him. He even manages to take out one of the most powerful heroes in the world just by teleporting an object at the right time. Sometimes skill trumps raw power. If there's one character who pops up in the trailer, it's Raikou. As the illegitimate daughter of Brainwave, she has his impressive psychic powers, most notably the ability to create complex illusions that separate someone's mind from their body. As impressive as her psychic powers are, truthfully, she doesn't even need them. As you can tell from the trailer, she's an elite warrior who wields two katana with an expert skill. She has the fighting abilities to be an epic street-level hero, put her father's powers on top of that, and she should be the most powerful hero in the series. The problem is that she's a bit too aware of how overpowered she is. Raikou's ego doesn't account for the possibility that someone would figure out a way to outsmart her. While she puts up an intense fight in the story, eventually they're able to use her own powers against her with ease. Repro probably has the most impressive power in the entire series. He's able to duplicate any other hero's power at will. Unlike other heroes with this power like Rogue from the X-Men, Repro doesn't have to be touching them at all. He can pretty much just show up in a crowd of superhumans and use whichever power he wants. The problem with Repro is that he's not very skilled with this ability. When we first meet him, he's in a suspended animation prison after getting caught trying to commit a crime. Despite the fact that he should be the most powerful person in any room with superheroes, he was captured and put on display in a hotel lobby like a piece of art that would serve as a warning to other criminals. Also, he has varied success when using a hero's own power against them. A truly adept hero will naturally be better at using their own power than he would be. When he tries to take on Brainwave, he utterly fails to out-psychic him. Sometimes, all the power in the world isn't enough to make a win. Do you remember how menacing Hans Landa from Inglorious Bastards was? Well, imagine if that character had the ability to literally control the very air that you breathe. That's what Barnabas Wolf, aka the Molecule Master, is. He serves as a rogue superhuman hunter for the regime in the later issues of Jupiter's Legacy. His ability to bend any inorganic matter to his will would make him a terrifying villain all on its own. What really sets him over the top is his cunning mind. He brings a Sherlock Holmes level of intelligence to all of his interrogations, with a facade of friendliness. The only problem is that while he's an expert superhuman hunter, he's not really a heavy hitter in a superhuman battle. In a group battle with a ton of heroes, Wolf doesn't usually rise to the top. Seeing as Jupiter's legacy almost always features a giant group of heroes punching each other out in a sea of blood and colorful costumes, that does hurt him quite a bit. A big part of Jupiter's legacy is about Brandon and Chloe not living up to the level of their parents. The second generation of superheroes is largely depicted as a disappointment for most of the series. There's only one kid we meet from the third generation, Jason Hutchins. If the brief glimpses of Jason's superheroic skills are any indication of the kind of hero he will grow into, I'd say the third generation is going to be the one that lives up to the legacy. Like his grandfather, Jason has a wide variety of powers like flight and super strength. He also has a genius level intellect, capable of creating complex machines like a superhuman detector. He's also a master strategist who stages a successful prison break from Supermax despite the fact that he faced overwhelming odds. The thing that probably gives Jason the biggest edge is his upbeat attitude. There are several times where his jaded parents think that they are doomed, only for Jason to encourage them that there's always a way to win. Usually, he proves to be right, too. 
Brandon Sampson is more or less the Kylo Ren of the Jupiter's Legacy series. He's the prodigal son of two heroes, and is expected to carry their legacy through to a new generation. Instead of doing that, he goes about as hard in the other direction as possible. When we first meet him, he's more interested in partying and getting endorsements than actually saving the world. By the time he finally decides to save the world, he is convinced to take over the world and bend it to his will. This proves to be pretty easy for Brandon. He possesses his father's super strength, speed, flight, and telekinetic powers. That doesn't really work out well for the Utopian, though. Brandon is the only one who is able to match his father in terms of strength, and is the one selected to finish him off. Then he goes about conquering the world, which isn't that hard when you're the default number one superhero on the planet. And you thought Homelander was bad. No one really expected Chloe Sampson to ever rise up to her parents' level. As a pacifist and a socialite more interested in notoriety than saving the world, it seemed like Chloe would be lucky just to make it to 30. Then she had a child and everything changed. You know those stories where a mother lifts a car in order to save her kid? Well, imagine if that mother is one of the most powerful beings on the planet. That's pretty much what happens when the regime comes for young Jason. After that, she decides to actually do the superhero thing and overthrows her brother's empire. To top it off, she takes him to Mars, where she can safely unleash all of her power in a punch that shatters Brandon for good. Unfortunately, we don't get to see much of the members of the Union actually fighting beyond a few generic showdowns. In Jupiter's Legacy, most of them are deceased when the series begins, while the rest are deceased by the time it ends. The prequel series, Jupiter's Circle, focuses more on the Union's personal lives, putting the superhero business in the background. The one hero we do get a good feel for is George Hutchins, the Sky Fox. He's basically what it would be like if Bruce Wayne really did embody the playboy persona he pretends he has to convince people he's not Batman. Sky Fox is one of the most powerful heroes with his abilities like flight and super strength. On top of that, he's one of the greatest minds of his generation. He can create complex sci-fi machines out of spare parts like a superhero MacGyver. These can range from earplugs that nullify Brainwave's powers to a supermax prison capable of holding any supervillain. It's no surprise that after his falling out with the team, he ended up becoming the strongest villain in the world. Hopefully the series focuses more on this time period because it sounds awesome. There's no doubt that Walter Sampson is the strongest hero in the world, aside from his brother. He has incredible psychic powers that let him warp people's minds, trap them in fantasy worlds, and complex telekinesis. Walter spends most of his life posing as one of Earth's greatest heroes, but he's actually the most nefarious person on the planet. If you cross Scar from The Lion King with Professor X's powers, he's what you would get. Walter is able to manipulate Sky Fox's girlfriend into falling in love with him. He manipulates world leaders to go along with his plans for America and stages a mass betrayal of the Utopian. After the Netflix series drops, don't be surprised if he pops up on a few lists of the greatest supervillains of all time. Was there any doubt who would be number one? Sheldon Sampson, known mostly by his title The Utopian, is without question the most powerful superhuman in the series. He has superhuman strength, speed, flight, laser vision, and telekinesis. The Utopian is literally so powerful that all the other heroes in the world have to jump him right after he survives a nuclear blast just to have a hope of taking him down. Even in his superhero career, Chloe says that he overpowers most of his enemies so much that he's able to trick or subdue them into defeat without having to use force. What makes the Utopian even more of a threat than his powers is his iron will. There is literally no moving the Utopian from a moral position once he decides on it. This proves to be just as much of a threat to himself as the younger generation of heroes attacks him just to be able to escape his morality. Still, in a world full of evil Superman allegories, this is one stand-in who is arguably more Superman than the man himself. Of course, now the internet is going to ask the obvious question. Who would win if Utopian and Superman ever fought? The answer is that we would because that would be awesome. 